Come on in, welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're looking at five times Jeff Probst made the wrong call at challenges. Jeff is a professional, the best reality host in the business for my book, although sometimes that is a low bar. Keep being a child of God. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Claire. Not only is Jeff great at digging into the intricate game dynamics at Tribal Council with a single question or comment, he's also incredible at narrating the challenges. One of Jeff's hosting duties is to call challenges when a player or tribe wins. 99% of the time, he's great at that. But sometimes Jeff or the show makes the wrong call at challenges, rewarding and then sometimes rescinding a challenge win. What did Probst get wrong and was it corrected? Let's find out. All that said, let's break down five times Jeff Probst made the wrong call during a challenge. At number five are a pair of team challenges that were disputed by the losers, only to have the rulings overturned later, turning the losers into winners. Let's start with a reward challenge in episode six of Survivor Marquesas. As a result of one of the most lopsided tribe swaps in history, new Mata Amu, consisting at this point of Kathy, Nalia, Pascal, and Gina, is getting trounced by the new Rotu tribe, which has like twice as many members and way more Zoes. In this late pre-merge reward challenge, the players have to unlock paddles, then send two tribe members out in an outrigger canoe to retrieve a flag from a buoy. When they get back, their canoe must be within reach of a chain, and the tribe whose members are all on the mat when they place their flag in the tiki wins reward, which is... uh, Sierra Mist. Wow, they really went all out on the sponsors this season. This would be a much needed victory for this tribe of underdogs. In theory, Jeff calls the challenge for Rotu, but Gina goes rules lawyer and points out that the general wasn't at the mat when John put the flag in, and that Rotu's canoe is not within the chain's reach, so Jeff overturns the call, and Mata Amu goes on to enjoy their reward. Again, in theory. Similarly, the episode 2 combined reward and immunity challenge in Survivor Cook Islands is called incorrectly. In this challenge, Puka and Raro are far ahead of both Kiki and Aitu, fighting for some first place tarps. It looks like Puka and Raro finish at the exact same time, but Jeff only has two eyes. He reads Puka's trivia answers first and awards them first place. I'm guessing that Raro put up a stink because in the post-challenge aftermath, Jeff acknowledges that the challenge was actually too close to call and both Raro and Puka will be getting tarps. They're both really small moments, but it's nice to see Jeff correct his error and rule properly and equitably in real time. Plus, if any tribe needed a tarp, it's Raro. Please put something down before you do that in the shelter. At number four is Laurel's immunity win at the final seven of Survivor Ghost Island, a challenge which Wendell technically finished first. This challenge involves building a bridge plank by plank, then building a ladder step by step, then sliding a puzzle slide by slide. Wendell, Dom, Seabass, and Laurel all fly through the first two portions of the challenge, all reaching the puzzle portion at roughly the same time. This is an important challenge for Wendell or Dom to win. After six post-merge eliminations, some of the other players in the game are finally kinda realizing that Wendell and Dom are running away with this thing, and Final 7 is traditionally one of your last chances to make a major play against major players. That's what Donathan and Kellen are trying to do, although, yeah, good luck convincing Angela, Seabass, or Laurel to do anything. Survivor, which furniture store did you find these three at? Nevertheless, Wendell is still uniquely motivated to win the challenge. He or Dom having immunity here would all but seal up whatever slim chance the others have of pulling together their cute little coup attempt here. And he does! Except he doesn't call it, he just stands there checking his work, leaving a half-second opening for Laurel to snag the win right out from under him. Prompting Wendell to whine that he had it first, he just didn't call it. Probst points out that you have to call your win, and Wendell ultimately poutily backs down from his claim. It's not a mistake Wendell will make again. Jeff Probst! What? I think I'm done, bro! 
I side with Jeff here. The puzzle isn't finished until Jeff can validate it, and he's not gonna validate it unless you say something. But, you know, I guess it was nice to see any bump in the road, no matter how minor, for Wendell and Dom at this point in the game. You know, on the bright side, Wendell, I bet if you just ask Laurel for that immunity, she'll probably just give it to you. At number three is the immunity challenge in episode five of Survivor All-Stars. In this immunity challenge, members of the two tribes, Shapara and Mogo Mogo, must traverse a series of balance beams to retrieve tribe colored flags. In the middle is a battle bridge where members of opposing tribes must grapple with one another, attempting to force each other into the water. The first player in the water forfeits their flag. First team to 20 flags wins. Boston Rob is the clear star of this challenge. He's flying through the course and retrieving flags at double the speed everyone else is, leading the rest of Shapara to just jump off when it's their turn so that Rob can just go ahead and solo this challenge. He's also intentionally planting himself at the bridge and forcing confrontations, even though being confrontational is so unlike him. He knocks out Kathy at one point, and although he technically loses his first duel against Ethan, he does probably take out a few of Ethan's teeth, so we'll call that a win. When he forces a fight against Colby and they tumble into the water together, Jeff rules that Colby's out and that Rob won. But a frame-by-frame -frame playback reveals that Rob's foot touched the water a split second before Colby did, meaning Colby actually should have won this duel. But hey, Colby accidentally cheated on several challenges in Australia, so we'll just call this fair. Plus, who could blame Jeff here? From his POV, Colby was clearly in the water first. You know, this might actually be the official moment when Jeff broke up with Colby as his survivor BFF and moved on to Boston Rob. There was a minor stink made about this in the press the day after this episode aired, although you'd think there were bigger things to complain about from this very challenge. Probst actually admitted he was wrong in an interview with the New York Post after this episode aired. Quote, I blew another one. Part of the rules in the contract the players sign is that during the challenges, I'm the sole arbiter and final call. There are often judgment calls. This is one I just blew. I might be influenced if they didn't moan about every single call and look at me like I blew it every time. The next time I play poker with Colby, he needs to be reminded to ease up a bit. Yeah, Colby, be gentle with Jeff. At number two is the trivia challenge at the final four of Survivor Africa, a potentially million dollar blunder on the show's behalf for Lex. For the first few seasons of Survivor, the final four immunity challenge was a trivia challenge about the 12 previously eliminated castaways as a test of uh, social skill, I guess. You know, you really know the essence of a person when you're aware that they were the 1997 National Watermelon Seed Spitting Champion, which was an actual question asked during Marquesas. They ended up stopping these for numerous reasons, mostly because it's pretty boring and also because they completely screwed it up in the third time they did it. By the final round of Africa's Final Four trivia competition, Kim, Lex, and Big Tom are all tied with six correct answers each. But Kim doing so well is a problem for the other three players. The three guys all want to go to final three together, and her winning immunity obviously threatens that a great deal. So it's very important that Lex or Tom get the next question right. The million dollar question? Which female survivor does not have anything pierced, including her ears? Uh, does this seem a tad personal to anyone else? Kim answers Kelly, Ethan answers Linda, Lex answers Lindsay, and Tom answers Jesse. Turns out Kelly is the female survivor without any piercings, so Kim wins the challenge and ultimately gets second place in the game. Here's the problem, Kelly wasn't the only unpierced woman this season. Both Kelly and Lindsay have no piercings, meaning Lex should have scored a point. And honestly, Tom should have answered Lindsay too. I mean, come on man, how close of a look do you need? It's an honest mistake on the show's part, but nonetheless a massive blunder that forced CBS to pay out an additional 100k, the prize for coming in second place, to both Lex and Big Tom. 
Would Lex have won if he and Kim went into a runoff challenge? He won immunity and she was voted out? Maybe, probably not. Incredibly, the show did Final Four trivia one more time after this, and it wasn't a $200,000 blunder that caused them to end silly Final Four trivia forever. It was Vesepia breaking the challenge by writing down personal details about everyone she met and just studying that before the challenge. Wait, it's crime reporter Tammy's dream job to work at the New York Times? Oh man, I would have guessed Patricia. At number one is the immunity challenge at the final seven of Survivor Pearl Islands, won, then lost, by Burton. In this challenge, the players are given three words, Survivor, Pearl, and Islands. They must use these three words to spell out 20 new words of varying lengths. And don't get cheeky, no plurals, no non-English languages, no proper nouns, no Survivor, Pearl, or Islands, or any variations thereof. You've gotta love these budget-friendly old-school challenges. This is like the highest stakes spelling bee ever. And in this one, there are no children around, so this is way better. I actually really like this challenge because you learn that all survivors suck at spelling. As if there was any doubt. They're not good. Krista calls her win within a few minutes, only to be eliminated due to a misspelling. Then Tijuana calls her win, but is eliminated for using plurals, but uh, points for using railed. Then Fair Play's eliminated for a misspelling too. Okay, can anyone spell? Uh, not Sandra, Lil has plurals. Has no one here played Scrabble before? Dara is gonna win by default. After Burton says he's done, Jeff reviews his board and awards Burton immunity. Burton wins, it's a done deal. But as the players leave the immunity spelling bee, Jeff actually calls them all back and points out that Burton misspelled liaison. So he's also eliminated. Because they all saw each other's boards when they left, Sandra, Lil, and Dara enter a final face-off. They're given three new words, and whoever can form the most new words after a minute wins, which is Dara with 14 words, almost as many words as she's spoken this entire season. However, I actually think neither Burton nor Dara truly deserved this immunity. I think it's possible, if not extremely likely, that if Jeff made the proper call from the beginning and eliminated Burton for misspelling liaison, Sandra actually would have won what would be her only immunity win in four times playing this game. Lil's board had several plurals on it, so she would have been eliminated, and Sandra was legit ahead of Dara by at least a few words and had fixed her surrender error. However, I'm glad things worked out this way instead. It's very fitting to me that the only time Sandra came within spitting distance of an immunity win in her entire Survivor career is a stationary spelling challenge that she, well, she actually didn't even win. Got nothing else for ya. If you want to be a liaison between YouTube and myself, like and subscribe and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.